patreon.com slash the walk off podcast uh four dollars a month gets you in there let's talk wins above replacement this is a i mean when i got the request from you last night can we talk about how dumb wins above replacement is i was so excited to talk this with you because scott likes wins above replacement i i think it's a vibe more than a stat i think it's kind of a pseudoscience um so we could definitely talk that before we get into it and i'll pull this up uh, on the screen joel you won't see it but i've come up with uh what i this is a, a better version of wins above replacement and i really wish this would catch on maybe you can help me with it this is uh and i'll just show you that but i'll pull it up on screen this is uh instead of war this is ass with three s's so this is uh adam's sliding scale of superiority <laughs> love that and uh it's you know wins above replacement it's like oh he has a war of like 6.2 or whatever we we mm. get rid of numbers for ass it's just emojis okay I'm all that, this is how serious this metric is okay so We've got, I've got like a zero through eight, and we're going to just kind of compare this to what the relevant number would be for war. So eight is like MVP season, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Peach. Peach emoji. Peach. Peach ah, okay. Because right? of ass. Mm -hmm. Got it? Mm -hmm. um, and, I'm, and I'm childish. Um, seven, elite, mm -hmm. right? That is the uh, the head explosion emoji. Mind blowing, gotcha. right? Um, number six. On uh, war would be like an all star, great season, right? That is the drooling emoji, right? You're salivating uh, yeah. at how good this player is. Mm -hmm. um, that single drop out the side of the mouth, yeah. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, a war of five. That's the you're silencing your critics at that point, right? That you is the uh, f the like what is that a finger? One finger to your lips, the Vladdy around third base, if you will. Yeah. So we're calling we're calling that wowzers. On the ass scale. Uh, and then we got four. That's a good player. So that's a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. uh, three. Solid. That's a fist bump. Okay. Uh, two. Two. You're a role player. So it's a wizard emoji. Oh. See what I did there? Put effort into this. I put, I put effort into this. This has got to catch on, Joel. You got to blow this up the, on TikTok. The, the wizard. That That's the selling point. <laughs> I know. Role that's... player. That's my favorite. <laughs> All right. N then number one, we got awful. And it's a uh, it's the blue emoji with the chattering teeth and the frost. Mm -hmm. And then zero is gross. And that's the puke emoji. So. And, and negative one is Kikuchi. <laughs> it's just a picture of Kikuchi. It's not even a emoji. It's just a full on picture of Kikuchi. Okay. <laughs> now that the nonsense is out of the way. Let's uh, let's talk wins above replacement. Realistically, yeah. though. Um Where's your gripe come from? Because this is bandied about by so many, whether it's content creators or Anthony Racker on the MLB network. Um, this is just a number that is the easy go-to of like, who's got the higher war? It's becoming the, who is the MVP? Who has the higher war, right? What are your gripes with it? You know what? Let's let's start this. Let's steel man the argument. Let's let's start with what do you like about it? What I like about it is that it seemingly takes in all aspects of the game and combines it into one number. So you're looking at a number that represents your offense, your defense, your arm, your running ability, pretty much every aspect supposedly of what makes you a baseball player is compacted into one number. And we just have to know that one number at the end of the year. We don't have to know average on base uh, ops ops plus woba x woba all the endless stats we've broken it down to one number we know that one number we know that number we know he's a good baseball player you can't get to 10 war if you have serious holes in your game right we understand pretty much who you are if you're two if you're four we, we get a good understanding of the ball player you have to be to fill in those slots um so that would be the, my compliment to war. My my issue with war is, first of all, I don't think I'm, I'm going to be, we just talked about Moneyball so much. 
I'm not the biggest on base guy. I'm not the biggest fan of on base percentage. I think okay. that that stat can get a little bit blown out of the water. I think it's a little bit too respected. To me, it's always come down to your on base is great, but I love your batting average to be pretty well connected to it. Okay. So, okay. Let's, let me just pause you here because I'm with you, but I want to clarify for anybody who maybe is a casual fan or new to baseball, doesn't understand the difference of what on base percentage is. So batting average is hits divided by at bats, right? You had a hundred at bats, you got 30 hits. Your batting average is 300, right? Your on base percentage works similar, but it also accounts for walks and hit by pitch correct not that hit by pitch is that big of a factor but certainly walks is so you have 100 plate appearances you have 20 hits and 10 walks your on base percentage is 300 correct that's correct okay so i agree with you in that there is value in measuring an on base percentage and recognizing that there is value in a walk. Yes, absolutely. Right? We, can not, yes, we can agree they, on that. We can agree on that. My argument is that they are by far the worst outcome that you can have as a positive outcome when it comes to hits, when it's the a base hit, double, triple, right. home run. No one walk. is advancing from first to third on a walk yes, the way they is. could on a single base hit. No one is scoring from second on a walk the way a base hit could. So There's no I, errors on a walk. There's no right. extra potential. There's no bad throws connected to a walk. There's no advance. There's no, um, you know, you hit into a, 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 you hit a, got a runner on second base. You hit a ground ball to second. You get thrown out at first, but you advance that runner to third. You get out, but it's only, it's the first out of the inning. Like you put yourself slightly in a better position than that walk to score a run. So you're Even saying, you're out. saying runner on second. Yeah. A better outcome is a base hit. Or sorry, is a is the ball in play where you get out at first, but the base runner advances to third? It's it's pretty close. It's pretty. I close. wouldn't. There's definitely an argument to be made. I'd have to really consider that. Um, but yeah, I would say circumstantially, in different circumstances, that's probably correct. Almost certainly so, is correct in some circumstances. So, so the the big large large point that I'm trying to make here is that since the money ball angle of 2002, since the shift to on base percentage that on base percentage is so, so important. What we've lost is I feel like we have taken a step. It was supposed to be a step forward in run production. I feel like it's actually been a step backwards in run production. When you look at players and the runs that they produce and the RBIs that they get, I feel like we're looking at league leaders who lead the league in RBIs at 120, as opposed to back in the 90s when you'd see it at 140, 145. Okay, people are going to laugh at the idea that this guy's bringing up RBIs. What a stupid counting stat from a different generation. He's yelling at clouds and bringing up RBIs. To me, this is here's here's my ultimate example. We are going to probably put Joey Votto in the Hall of Fame. Correct. Everybody kind of feels that Joey Joey Votto is a Hall of Fame baseball player. He has 65 war at first base over his career. Okay. When you look at the way that he has played baseball with his 920 OPS, with his 130 OPS plus, he has produced in his career about 2,200 runs between the runs he scored and the runs he's knocked in. Okay, 16 years of his career. Now, let's bring up a former Blue Jay alum, one of the best Blue Jays of all time, Joe Carter. Okay, Joe Carter has a OPS of 775 for his career. 150 points lower. Okay. 150 points lower than Joey Votto. But he scored 70 more runs in a 16 year career, the same amount of length okay. per career. I was just, that was going to be my question. I was going to catch you there. Was it was a shorter career? career. Okay. 16 years. Both, both played sure. 16 seasons. Carter has scored 50 more runs, knocked in 300 more runs. Substantial okay. more run production. Substantial offense. Yeah. Okay. Played. Outfield and first base had the ability to steal 230 bases in his career. Okay. His war is 19. Joey Votto's is 65. 
If you're to tell me what baseball player I would like on my team for 16 seasons, it's the guy who produced 25% more runs than the other guy. All right. Slight pushback here. I love where you're going with this. We are comparing different eras for one. Sure. Another complication here is that part of offense production, especially RBIs, is also dependent on the team you're on. Yep. And Joe Carter was only on four winning teams in this entire career. It was the 91, 92, 93 Blue Jays and 90. Every team before that, he was 70 and 91, 70 and 92 with Cleveland, San Diego for the first 10 years of his career. So he was on atrocious teams, ripping 120 RBIs with a 770 OPS. Because his focus at the plate was driving the ball and not walking, not being a number three or four hitter who gets up there and takes strikes, take strikes. I can, this is, okay, we've this... gotten to the point, Adam, where they do, they come up, the runners on second and third, two outs, one out, whatever the situation, first pitch strike right down the middle, they take. This is my problem with stats in general, and more specifically, uh, these advanced metrics that are being used, is that things are not weighted proportionally the way they should be so like in terms of on base percentage we are weighting the value of a walk the same as we are a base hit right a single base hit i know that there are stats to take into account like for slugging like extra base hits and whatever right when it comes to your ops the 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 on base percentage factor of it when it, it is equally weighed against your slug okay and and so that's where the issue I think is, is that literally you could have, a, I know this is a hypothetical, but just to make the numbers simple, you could have a guy with 200 hits in a season and zero walks, or you could have a guy with 200 walks and zero hits, and they would have the same on-base percentage. So that's looking at that just on the, the score sheet, you would say that's the same guy. That is the same value we pulled out of that. But as we talked about, no one's advancing first to third on a walk. No one's scoring from second. There was zero chance for an overthrow on any of those walks. So it is dumb that it is weighed the same. So now this is all mindset when it comes to hitting. Joey Votto, 16 years of a career, sitting in the three or four spot, mostly, mostly the three spot. Okay, In his career, 48 sacrifice flats. 48. Okay, In his Joe career. Carter, in his career, 48. Joe Carter, 106. 106. 50 some more runs produced on outs because he's looking to drive the ball. And even when he doesn't, there's a runner on third base. He gets it out there far enough. Run just walks in. So how does this tie into war specifically? How does this tie into war? The fact that a guy who produced, like I said, 25% more runs over the same career length playing on Equally bad teams for most of his career, producing, like I said, 25% more runs, shouldn't have a third of the war to the other player. That makes absolutely no sense. This guy, Joey Votto, at first base, playing mediocre defense and providing what he does, is not three times the value of a guy who produces more runs. It makes no sense. Carlos Delgado, another great example. This is a guy played about the same career length as Joey Votto, 100 more runs scored, 400 more RBIs, 150 more extra base hits, 140 more home runs, okay? 35 less war, 25 less war. He has a 40 war for his career, where Votto has a 65 war. There is no way that I am taking Joey Votto over Carlos Delgado for the careers that they had, even though statistically when it comes to war, you're saying that this guy is two thirds, you're saying Delgado is two thirds the value value of Votto. It doesn't make sense according to the number. It just doesn't. (sighs) Yeah. I don't want to get too into the weeds personally on when we're comparing guys of different eras, because I haven't looked at the numbers enough to understand that, but I do follow generally your, your argument. Um, Another gripe that I have with war, and I want to hear your thoughts on this, is the uh, positional adjustments. 
right? So, mm-hmm. like, offensively, a guy has whatever for numbers, and he plays catcher, right? Versus a guy has the exact same numbers, literally hit for hit, walk for walk, double for double, exact same numbers, but he plays first base. We have these like arbitrary adjustments, right? Because we don't expect as much from a catcher as we do from a first baseman, right? And this is, I think, an attempt to regulate because we're not getting the same offensive production from a catcher. So they get like a plus 12 war adjustment and a first baseman we're expecting more. So whatever their stats offensively are, they get like a minus 12 tacked on. I just hate that. I know it's like second base is like a plus two and shortstop is like a plus eight and and stuff like this. Just based on like, well, shortstop's a more valuable position. So it's an attempt to compare apples to oranges. And I just don't think you actually can. So I I don't like it for that reason as well. I I get lost in in, in some of those aspects too. Just just because uh, here's one small example. Juan Soto goes to the Padres last year. In his time with the Padres last year, I believe he had a 778 OPS. Okay. They they put that at as 130 OPS plus, 130. Okay. Bo over the course of the entire season is like 808, and he's 126. Juan Soto oh. gets a how does that make sense, right? That doesn't how make sense Bo, at all. It doesn't make any sense. Go look at the numbers. That's what they list on baseball reference is Juan Soto with 40 points lower. OPS in San Diego, just San Diego last year has a 130 OPS plus. And then Bichette has a 126 with 30 points higher on his seasonal OPS. And I just don't understand. Is it, it. Is it just from Bo having 400 errors last year? Is that what it is? Well, it has nothing, <laughs> has nothing to do with his, his OPS is strictly his hitting, right? It has nothing to do with his. his no, no, no. But, but I mean, like, sorry, I'm, I'm thinking in, in terms of war. Oh, no, uh, yeah, no, this is just his, their specific the OPS, talking. right, 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 okay. Sorry, and for some OPS. reason. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't track either. My head spins lower, just thinking of this. Yeah, he's got, thir- Soto was 30 points lower in OPS in San Diego last year than Bo was over the course of the entire season. But he's at 130 OPS plus in San Diego and Bo's at 126. And I don't, I'm like, he's at shortstop. You think that that would be a tougher position offensively than right field is is ops okay so ops let's just again we'll break this down and then we're going to move on to the true meaning of money ball and we'll get into that but i just want to wrap this uh segment up before we get too too long here so ops is on base percentage which we've already talked about plus slugging percentage slugging percentage does weight a double and a triple and a home run more right it is like total bases or something divided by at bats or some mixture of that is out of a thousand right a thousand being the highest on base that you can get right highest slugging percentage you can get is four thousand okay that would be a home run every at bat home run every at bat okay the highest that you you see leading the league league every year is in the 600s usually unless judge goes god mode hits seven okay so ops plus Mm-hmm. Sorry. OPS is the combination of on base percentage. That's the O. The P is the plus, and the S mm-hmm. is the slugging percentage. On base plus slugging. And it's literally just whatever their on base percentage is. It's 400 plus a slugging of 700. Their OPS is 1100. That's great. Great year. Okay. OPS plus is then scaled versus the league. Correct? That's correct. Cool. Whereas. They take the number of every baseball player and they go the median or the average. We're going to have people crapping on me for using the wrong math term because people love Mm -hmm. doing that. But they take, here's the average OPS this season. Yes. And then whatever your OPS plus is, is relative to that. So if you have an OPS plus of 130, you're 30 percentage points better than the average player. Yes. So substantially and, above average. Yes. So it's rating you against the league, like you said. And technically, the value of 100 is changing every year. Right. But it's always based, but the average is always 100. So that's why right. there's a standard in 
seeing how much better much better you are than the league because right. that OPS number could league average OPS could be 750 which it was 2 years ago last year it was 700 so that it it there's a big swing right so if you hit if you hit 725 you had a positive OPS one year and you had a negative yes. or a, yes. a OPS plus under 100 the following year got it okay now does this also scale by position is this is it divided by like here is the OPS average for right fielders and is that what OPS plus is based on or is do you see what I'm saying here is that why Juan Soto's numbers would be higher OPS plus I'm pretty sure is to the league and then WRC plus is to the position weighted runs created so once again we're getting into stats that are literally algorithmically (laughs) based and just so elaborate and over the top but um yes I'm pretty sure that the stat that OPS plus is just your standard against the league average OPS. Um, if we were better prepared at our homework, we would just, <laughs> um, we would just know this. Um, I would have, have this note prepared you, instead. Here I am looking. So I'm at MLB.com. Numbers, looking up on like base. Soto and Michelle, like I had mentioned, like you, that's where I get confused on a player who has okay. lower OPS, but higher OPS plus. Okay. Right? So here, here is the, this is from MLB.com on base plus slugging plus that's the dumbest (laughs) name now that i'm reading this out loud ops plus i've never said it in full form before yeah (laughs) on base plus slugging plus uh plus is the premium subscription that gets you all the shows on netflix um so on base plus slugging plus disney plus uh definition ops plus takes a player's on base plus slugging percentage and normalizes the number across the entire league. So there you go. It is not positional based. However, it does account. This is, I think worth noting. It does account for several external factors like ballparks. It then adjusts to a score of 100 as league average. 150 is 50% better than league average and so on. So, so yeah, ballpark the formula so is OPS divided by league OPS comma adjusted for park factors and that's where i think that like nonsense with boba shett versus juan soto and their ops doesn't match or ops plus doesn't match up so i guess they're just saying what that toronto is a hitter friendly ballpark and so his numbers are slightly inflated compared to san diego and washington so yeah so technically those ballpark design changes are going to drop everybody's ops plus on the team right well, yeah, I mean, I think every every move we made in the ballpark uh, in the outfield wall, other than, I guess, raising stuff 14 feet. But again, this is where my gripe comes that's in. That's a little sneak for the, the the salary. Hey, your OPS plus isn't that great. Just keep bringing the, the walls in maybe. here. Lowers your OPS plus. In this maybe, energy. maybe, maybe. But again, this is where, and again, back to war, where it's a vibe BS stat. Is when you like, I get op, I get on base percentage, even though it's not a perfect stat. I get it, right? Uh-huh. Slugging percentage is calculated. There are is a real formula. Agree with it or disagree with it, it's a thing. It's real. But then when you start factoring in ballpark factors, like what is that based on, right? Like I understand there's probably a score for every ballpark, right? The Rogers Center is a ratio of 1.17 for all offensive yeah. stats and a non-hitter friendly one might be a 0.852 so we adjust how many games did they play in this ballpark versus that but like where what are we actually basing these adjustment it's, numbers on it seems nonsensical and uh, it, it's altitude times weather divided by time of game over the square root of the wall height like it's just nonsense so when the when the smallest gear in the like in the machine is bull, bullshit mm-hmm. as far as like weather adjusted ballpark adjusted the whole thing is a scam in my opinion so that's where it breaks down for me if we're doing yeah. ballpark adjustments time of game weather adjustments i'm that's out it's like it's just like first of all you're you're doing some general like ballpark adjustment to your number, which is so your 50% of the games that you played, you have to apply a number of your home stadium. And then how do you go into the, the complexity of your road 
your your like road schedule because every road schedule is unique except well, that's for a, this season, right so that's a great point man that's a great point is that like if we're gonna go as far as as adjusting someone's offensive numbers based on the ballpark why are we not doing it on like well this guy his number should actually be better because they uh they stayed at really bad hotels on their road trip so considering the crappy night of sleep that he probably got his numbers should actually be better than they are you know what i mean like so you can't just start taking in some weird factors and not consider everything like yeah if you're not going to the point of every specific at bat and specific hit to say that is a a hit here, a run here. Like if you're not going into every specific at bat, then the like don't do said, any of them. You're applying a metric that's kind of dodgy and yes, yeah. it makes a lot of assumptions. I agree. Well, we're we're gonna almost certainly get roasted pretty hard in the comments because oh, yeah. I know there's a lot of people who who love war and swear by it. So let's move on from there. Um, 